A very common question that people are asking is about the housing market. Very common I hear is, are we headed for a housing crash? People have to remember that apart from the great financial crisis of 2008 and 9, the country had never seen all home prices as a total go down. We'd always seen gains from year to year. So now that we've been programmed that, st- that gains, that house pricing can go down, we're all asking, when's the next housing crash? And I've said over and over, I don't necessarily believe there has to be a housing crash. That might be confusing to you because we've seen such a big run up in housing prices. 20% year over year in the last year since COVID happened. I mean, just surging in, in housing prices. Got it. Now, I want to take you guys back in history a little bit because this is going to explain a little more about why I don't necessarily believe that housing prices could go down. Because right now, unemployment rate is 3.6%, but we have a lot of indications, including the technical definition of a recession, that we're in a recession right now. But remember, unemployment is a lagging indicator, which means that unemployment will, will change later, even after you enter a recession. Two, recessions usually take six to 12 months before they're announced. They'll, for example, they might sit there and say at the end of this year, hey, by the way, guys, we are in a recession and it started in April of 2022. It doesn't ever happen. We're right in the middle of it. Okay. So one of the worst times in history was the late 70s and early 80s. They're starting to feel very eerily similar to today. Why? We had very high inflation. We had high oil and gas prices. And we had an economy that seemed to be doing well and then skyrocketed in unemployment. So here are some unemployment numbers from 1975 to the end of 1984. Started at about 7% unemployment, went up to, I don't know, eight and a half, nine, fell back down to five, went up to, to 11 and a half, and back down to seven. Okay, so this is clearly not the best. Okay, it's, it's not as good as we had right now. We're not starting at 5% unemployment or 7% unemployment. We're starting at 3.6, half that number. Now, this is the consumer price index, which is what let's look at for inflation back from 1975-1984. The CPI was 51.9 and finished at 105, which is an increase of 102%. That is about 7% per year, guys. For a 10-year period, for the cost to double, is about 7% per year. So for a 10-year period... The annualized, uh, the annualized inflation rate was 7%. Now let's look at home prices during that time. Now here are the home prices during that exact same period. We started at $38,100 for the median home price and ended over $80,000. So in that time period, we experienced a deep recession. We experienced interest rates going all the way up to 15 to 18%. And we still saw home prices going up and up and up and up and up and up and up. Why is that? Well, guys, as I've said a thousand times before, inflation is real estate's best friend. If you want to see the value of your real estate going up, that is a positive part to inflation. So if you're somebody who owns a home and you're going to, and we have high inflation for a while, you can at least know that your home value is going up. So why does your home value go up? Your home value goes up because the cost to replicate your house is going to increase over time. So if your house costs a hundred thousand dollars to build today, and that same house costs two hundred thousand dollars in five years to build, are you telling me your hundred thousand dollar home is still going to be worth a hundred thousand dollars in five years? Of course not. Now will it be worth two hundred thousand? Maybe not because it's older, it's not new, et cetera, but maybe it's worth 175. Some amount of money that gives somebody an incentive to not buy the new home. So if you're new to this channel and you like what I'm saying, I'm Paul, I'm a value investor. I like to look at data to make my decisions. In this situation, it's easy to sit there and cause and go on the facts of fear and anxiety and all these things, but I like to look at the data. As much as people might think I'm a perma bear. I've looked at housing prices and say, listen, do I think housing is very frothy? Absolutely. The fact that you can sell homes for above ask in a matter of days tells me that things are a little too excited. However, when asked the question about a housing crash, I say, whoa, pump the brakes. We don't have the same loose lending standards that we had in 05 and 06 and 07. We don't have the same fact, the same inventory levels. But I want everybody to remember that we still have things working against home prices right now. Two major things that I'm going to show you charts of. First, the 30-year average mortgage hit a low of 2.65% last year, and now it's well over 5%, over doubling. It got as close as 6% recently. And two, the reason why I don't believe it's an inventory issue, new home sales have plummeted. 
people are canceling brand new home sales. If inventory was the problem, if, if existing home inventory was a problem, people would not be canceling new home sales. It has to do with interest rates. Let me show you right now the, the interest rates in the last January 7th of 2021, we had 2.65% and most recently 5.3%, but we got very, very close to 6% here in the last few months. That's just the reality, guys. When your cost to borrow doubles and the average American's buying a home of three to $400,000, that's going to cost you tens of thousands of dollars a year in extra money. And that is a lot of money for anybody. Even if it's only 10,000 a year, it's still $800 a month. If you're making 100 to 120 a year, $800 a month is big money. If you're making less than that, you're probably not buying a three or $400,000 house, but these are real costs to people. This is absolutely a very important thing to understand that interest rates increasing do affect people's decision making. Now, let me show you the inventory numbers, numbers for new home sales. So here we are, US new single family houses for sale. Look at this skyrocket. This was early 2000s. We hit COVID, we dropped here. Boom, straight up. Now, why is that? Well, I believe a big part of this has to do with the fact that we have people that are scared off by these interest rates and I don't blame them. And I'm hearing home builders are sitting there and talking that they sit there and they're being more cautious on their new home starts. Now, every market's different and certain markets can do better than others. But you better believe if you go look at the housing data, the fastest growing markets that had the most appreciation are probably gonna see a slow down the most. And that's okay. And even if you live there, does this mean you're doomed? No. What this means is you might have to stay in your house longer and if you bought your house that you can afford easily and you put ample down payment down, even if you're forced to sell, you'll probably not have an issue. You might lose some money, but the goal here is it's a lesson to be learned. Buy a home that you plan on being in for a long time. Don't be speculative about it. Don't just buy a home that you hope to sell in two years for 40% appreciation. Those are not normal times. Over long periods of time, Home prices nationally should go up about with income, not just with CPI, with total GDP. Why? As you make more money, you're going to pay more money for a house. As you make more money, the cost of goods to build that house is going to go up and therefore housing prices go up. So another very common question we get in our community is a lot of people in there want to look at real estate as an investment, as renting out a home or an apartment building to get income. Now, this is a great conversation to have because as, as inflation goes up, our rents go up. As our rents go up, the value of our property will go up. Yes, our expenses go up along with it, but we can drive those rents at higher levels. We own a lot of real estate in this company. At one point, we had 1,000 units. Now we're down to 600, and we're on our way to three to 5,000 units at some point in the next 10 years. What's our goal? Our goal is to buy a property, remodel it, and get a higher rent. Your goal should always be to get the highest rents possible. That is our goal in our area to be the highest rent in our area. Inflation helps you do that. This is a good thing. Higher rates will help the rental market because people are less likely to buy then and they're going to rent for longer periods of time. When rates are so low, people can enter the market much easier. Like, hey, I make, I make $50,000 a year before a house that was out of reach for me because rates was 5 or 6%. Now it's too, at one point, it was mid to high tubes. I can afford that a lot more than before. So these are all parts of nothing in and of itself is good news or bad news. It's the approach of what you're looking for. And that's why I want you to understand. If you're hearing this and going, huh, that makes sense. You need to do me a favor. You need to subscribe to the channel because I try to look at all of these. I like to look at every investment as the present value future cash flow. I used to be like you. I used to get scared at all these news articles, all these news, but I don't even pay them any attention now. Why? Because the more I learned, the less I feared. And that's what I'm trying to also get our community members and viewers of our channel and subscribers of our channel to understand. As you learn more and more, you will fear less and less and less. Let me go out an extreme analogy. If I asked you to do plastic, not plastic, open heart surgery right now, you'd be scared to death. But if I put you through eight years of training, through med school, all these things to learn open heart surgery, you might be scared, but you're going to fear a lot less because you've learned a lot more. That's an extreme, but that's the way it is in everything in life. The more I understood how I can drive the real estate values of my properties, I stopped caring at all about appreciation. When I first started buying real estate, all I cared about was how is my, how is my property going to appreciate in, in value? And I just thought I'd have to wait for inflation. Now I drive my property value growth. So inflation, interest rates, all these things affect both 
the personal home you buy, as well as the investment properties you make. And your goal is to understand what drives them more and more. Thank you very much. Please make sure you subscribe to this channel and also click this next video on the upcoming recession could be the opportunity of a lifetime.